Moran. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it is a true honour to be able to pay tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth II on behalf of my constituents in Oxford West and Abingdon. And I restate the deep sorrow and sadness that many have already expressed. The ties between the Queen and the community were strong indeed. In every milestone of her reign, Abingdon celebrated with an eccentric and much-loved bun throwing. And she was a regular visitor to our area. She inspected a military parade at RAF Abingdon in 1968. She opened Sophos at Abingdon Science Park in 2000 and four and reopened the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford after its refurbishment in 2009. One constituent remembered the following when he attended the official opening of the jet fusion facility at Cullum. He said, it was opened jointly by the Queen and President Mitterrand. And as I recall, the Queen spoke first, first in English, <coughs> and then in very polished French, a wonderful way to open a European project. Another constituent remembered, we were privileged to meet the Queen in Malaysia when we lived there. I took my six-year-old daughter, who was so excited to meet the real Queen and held a bouquet for her. And when the Queen approached, my daughter, reluctant to release the flowers, asked, are you sure you're the real queen? You're not wearing a crown, only a hat. And the queen replied, I am sorry. The queen was a little heavy to wear today, but I hope you like my hat. And my daughter, now convinced, released the flowers. I will always remember her warmth and humor while handling my daughter's mistake. And what these stories, I think, show is not just her gargantuan work ethic, but also how her humility and humanity earned people's loyalty. I'm really struck by how many people have been saying, I'm not a monarchist, but I loved her. The fact that she held people's respect despite, not because of her title, is testament to the genius that she brought to the role and is an example to us all. Now, I'm sure many haven't got their heads around what life is going to be like without her. And people have mentioned stamps and coins. For me, as a Brit who grew up abroad, actually, it's the portraits. When we lived in Ethiopia in the 80s, we'd gather as a community at the British Club or at the embassy, and there she was, glorious in oils, gazing down on our festivities, from some ornate framed picture. And in Jamaica in the 90s, I remember visiting other schools as part of an orchestra practicing both the British and Jamaican national anthems in preparation for her state visit, where of course she too was head of state. And there she was again on the walls, the pictures smaller often and more humble, but always there. Through time and space, she was always there taken almost for granted, binding her people together. Until yesterday, when she wasn't anymore. And like many others, I'm sure, I cried. So my thoughts today are firmly with her family, and especially King Charles, at this incredibly difficult time. Now our loyalty transfers to him and after his pitch-perfect address just this afternoon, yeah. I think that shows we have absolutely nothing to fear. So may our beloved Queen rest in peace, and God save the King. Yeah. 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 Yeah.